This afternoon's project is to do a 500 hour service on the 260. So I got it home here at the house just because my shop's a little uh, cleaner here, a little more convenient to be able to just walk outside. So, and I'm pretty sure I'll have to go back through and look. I think I've done, I've either done the 250 hour service or the thousand hour service, which is pretty much the same, but I do have a few subscribers that always like to watch the service videos. So if this isn't something you care to watch, this may not be a real exciting video, but I'm gonna kind of go over all the parts of it and then, uh, I really need to wash it, but it's only like 40 degrees outside, so it's a little chilly. So I'm going to try to <laughs> at least clean the inside of it out because I had it open yesterday and it started raining. And yeah, it's kind of a mess. I've just been going, going, going. So today is going to be a uh, maintenance and cleanup day of this machine. It's got 1,507 hours on it. I think I got it in the end of July of 19, so... Just a little over, what, two, two and a half years or whatever. Made 1,500 hours, which is pretty good, but I've been extremely pleased with the machine. Yeah, you can tell it's nice and filthy. But yeah, it's been, I, I love this little excavator. It's been definitely a game changer for me, and it's probably, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd say I use it more than the loader. I, you know, it's almost 50-50 anymore, but I have found a lot of jobs where I can now use this or it's a little more efficient or a little easier than uh, having to get the loader and stuff like that in there. But uh, quickly, I guess what I'll go over and what I am gonna service is engine oil filter. I wanna check the outer air filter. Uh, I know that a lot of the intervals are a lot different on the excavators and what they are on the loaders. Uh, I'll do the fuel filter. I really, I guess from looking at the book, I didn't realize on these, it's like the loader's all 250 hour intervals. And that's kind of what I base this off of. But I think on this machine, you can actually go 500 hours, even on like an oil change, which I don't know. I mean, it seems like a lot to me, but, and then I want to say it's like a thousand hours on the fuel filter and the in-tank hydraulic filter, but on the loader, it's all 500 hours. So I don't know. I think I'll have to look and see. I may have changed all that at the thousand hour mark, but I'll probably go ahead and change them anyway. I've got them. I went and picked them all up last night. So I got the outer air filter, in tank hydraulic. These are the two fuel filters, which I think one of them, I think this one's the, it goes in the water separator. This is the oil, and then this is the pilot line filter. And I run T5 1540 Rotella, so it's like a synthetic blend. It's not full synthetic i don't know you could probably put full synthetic in this i'm not sure but that kind of i don't know i just always ran that and everything i've got so but yeah we'll kind of uh just dive right in so <clears throat> yeah you can tell it's filthy <laughs> it's, uh, it's really bad we may try to clean the whole thing up a little bit but uh right in here is the in-tank hydraulic Here's the fuel filter, or one of the fuel filters. Now the air filter's up here, and the oil is right down here. You probably can't see it very well. And then that's where the pilot line goes, and then this is the water separator. Which that's, that's not my, I don't ever mark anything on the filters. I just always put it in my notes on my phone when that was changed. So that's pretty much it. So oh, then I gotta do the gear oil and the final drives down here. So that is recommended on either one of them every 500 hours. But we'll start with the oil and then I'll just kind of work on changing some of this other stuff. And then I guess when we get done, we may try to take the air hose and <laughs> blow this thing out. But it's been a fantastic little machine, like I said. So it's it's held up well, but uh, enough talking. Let's just dive into this service and uh, I'll just kind of go through the steps again. Those that have one of these or kind of like the uh, service side, I know I don't do a ton of service or mechanic in videos. It's, I don't know, I guess to me, it's not really exciting. It's just kind of the necessary part of owning equipment, but some people that's, uh, you know, that's what they, their job is, is to service these or work on them or, or they like that a little bit more, so let's just get to it. Okay, I'm pretty sure I talked about this last time, but you can actually just take 
the three 17 millimeter bolts out of this cover and get right to where the drain plug is i end up doing this whole cover right here which these are 19 millimeters you can take these two out and then loosen these up and it comes off but the only reason on that is because uh how when you take the filter off it ends up running back here on this piece if you don't take it out and then just kind of runs all over the place so it's uh this, I don't know, this cover is not really heavy or whatever, and it's about as easy. I mean, you got to take that small one off, but it's about as easy just to take this big one off. It's a little cleaner. The first time I just took that small one off, and then I dumped oil all over the place and was trying to wipe it up. So I just got in the habit of uh, taking this thing off. So we'll set the camera down so I can pop it off real quick. And then you take this little cover off. And each new machine comes at this little tube that if you buy one used, you don't always get these to uh, put on there and drain the oil, but we'll get, we'll get that in a minute. But then, like I said, right up here is the, <clears throat> maybe don't leg run underneath there, is the oil filter. So what I kind of do is take this cover off and then I'll end up taking like a piece of cardboard or something. And I think I put it behind, I push these hoses behind and kind of put it on there. So then it all runs out to the pan because if not it just runs down on these and then if you left that other cover on it runs on that lip and then it just kind of runs everywhere and you, which you can tell it's still got a lot of dust and dirt and junk in here but it's just kind of nice to be able to uh take that cover off and inspect everything where you can kind of really see in here but i'm gonna get the drain pan and start draining the oil yeah here's the uh <laughs> little deal that you get it's pretty simple just a little uh I don't know, what, three quarter inch clear tubing in this little 90 degree bracket. But then it, I'm gonna get oil all over myself. Screws on there, and then I guess as you tighten it down, there's a spring. And the more you tighten it down, the more it pushes the spring in there, and the oil comes out. So that is pretty handy. I'm sure other manufacturers have something like this. But I'm going to take the plug out just to yeah and then as that kind of drains I'll work on changing like the air filter and the fuel filter and all that stuff and then we'll get the oil filter and uh yeah, start filling back up. So it's not a real long procedure, it's just a few filters. Probably just replace the outer. I don't know. Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little, uh, I'm sure it's a little dusty. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just replace it just because it's been so dry and dusty and I've got one, so I know they don't always, uh, they don't recommend, you can just blow it out and put it back in every thousand hours, but I've got it. I'm gonna go ahead and change it. And I've actually looked and yeah, a thousand hours is only when you gotta change the hydraulic filter and the pilot line filter. I don't know. I'll probably still change it. <laughs> just cause I don't know, that seems like a lot of hours to let those go. Like I said, I've already got them and I kind of do everything overkill anyway, so it's not going to hurt to keep them changed out. Plus, it seems like it's, I don't know, if it's the heat of the summer or whatever now, and then it seems like it's kind of been bogging or pulling down a little bit, so not all the time, just when it's real hot, so I'm going to go ahead and change that filter. Maybe it's just dirty for some reason, and we'll kind of check it then, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Better safe than sorry, I guess, so we'll just change everything. The fuel... It does recommend the two fuel filters be done every 500 hours, so we'll go ahead and get them. It's just the pilot line and hydraulic filters can actually go a thousand hours. And on the, which I, get, I know you guys see me do the suction strainer before, is it right here? It recommends the all the hydraulic fluid and that strainer be cleaned every 4,000 hours, where on the loader it's every 1,000 hours. So there's a big 
big jump or big difference in the two but i guess you're not i don't know tracking as much or something like that with these excavators like you do the loaders with the forward and back movement and stuff so it must be why they can go a little long and this one's a lot newer my loader's a 2011 and this one's a 19 so i'm sure they've come a long way in the intervals and people aren't going to like this or agree with this but I just fill the filters back up out of my fuel tank in my truck or my transfer tank that I got in there I think you can turn this thing on and let it just uh, fill the filters back up I know a lot of people say it will cause like contaminations and stuff doing that but I've done it this is the way I've always done it on everything and I've not had any issues so Maybe it's not the right way or one everyone agrees with, but it's worked for me. So <laughs> we'll just keep at it. Now you can't really see, but now I got taking the oil filter off and I kind of got my little cardboard thing, which it looks to be working. So yeah, I just kind of put a piece of cardboard in there where it keeps it off those hoses and stuff. And there's a little less to clean up, but like I said, you can't see, so we'll get this switched and then we just got the hydraulic, the water separator and the pilot line and then we'll fill it up with oil and start it up. I kind of do the same, I don't really fill the full filter up, but I just try to get some oil on there to kind of, to kind of, uh, you know, just lube up that. Okay, all I was saying when the camera dies, I just take a little bit of the new oil and kind of dump in there and then kind of lube up that seal a little bit so it's uh, not dry and stuff, so. And like I said, you guys can go. I mean, I could take the time and go to O'Reilly's and have them cross-referenced instead of using uh, like all the OEM filters. But surprisingly, uh, like the air filters, I think the, the oil filters are pretty much the same. Uh, I don't know if O'Reilly's can get this filter but the crazy part about it is some of these filters for me anyway are actually cheaper at the dealer than what they are going like napa or o'reilly's and stuff like that so which my new dealer midwest equipment is awesome so i mean i call those guys and they're they are on the spot and they have all this stuff in stock and what's actually pretty cool is they started making sure they have every a lot of stuff in stock for the tl250 loader that i've got so because i know there's not as many of those running still today but they've been great where uh they keep a lot of that stuff in stock now so any filters or anything like that that i need they've got those there so i mean like yeah the tracks the rollers the sprockets uh even the glass and stuff like that they keep all those in stock a lot of a lot of parts there on hand so uh, these guys are awesome so nick and mac and john and all those guys up there at midwest equipment they do a fantastic job so this was and it was actually nice of them because i called them last night to uh see if they had all this stuff they had it and they were able to box it up and uh set it outside for me as i didn't get it there to like seven o'clock last night and they were gone at like five so yeah they've been they've been awesome to work with so and like i said i think uh i think for all the filters so the two fuel filters, a pilot line, oil, hydraulic, air, and then these O-rings are for the, I think that's for the hydraulic on the lid that goes on there. And then these are for the uh, water separator and the pilot line and stuff. I think I've spent, I don't know, 250 bucks or whatever and all these, whichever thing's kind of gone up. Uh, this this filter right here is like eh, 80, I have to look, it's either 70 or 80 some odd dollars. The oil filters, I think under 10 bucks or whatever still. And then this one may be 30 or 35. But I know like the pilot line, it's, I think they've gone up to 40 maybe. But yeah, I mean, really it's not, not too bad. I mean, like I said, I got these before, I got the, I want to say it was the in and outer air filter for the loader before. And it was like 
$128 from O'Reilly's or I could get it from these guys for like $63 for the two of them or whatever. So don't you don't always uh, save going with the parts store, but let's get this thing put back on and we'll fill it up with oil. Right on the water separator, it's got a little wire here at the bottom. You just gotta, the plug that it hooks to, kind of just squeeze on the sides of that wire and or the rubber part. And then you can, Unscrew this bottom piece, and I'm sure fuel will run out. Probably supposed to take that hose loose, but it actually drains out underneath the bottom of the machine, so you can And you can finish unscrewing this. The filter should. Okay, it's still stuck in there. Voila. Now I'm dumping diesel. There we go. Uh, dump diesel. Glad I got me a handy dandy little ball underneath here. Well, we got a little bit of fuel in there. Okay, I'm gonna wipe all this up and then we'll uh, <laughs> get the new separator on. One of my new O-rings actually went around there, so I'll put the element back up in here without getting it super dirty. There's just a little tad, you kind of heard it pop and go on, and then this will go back on. Okay, now for this, you're definitely going to have a hot pink bowl. I used an inch and sixteenth socket. There's a big nut welded on or made on the end of this piece. I don't know what that is in metric. I don't know if that's like a 23, 24. This is where the pilot line filters at. Which this is what, it's like the filter that goes to all the controls and stuff in the cab. And there should be a little bit of hydraulic fluid coming out. I don't quite have my bowl set in the right spot. But that's one of the O-rings that I need to replace right there. All right, now we'll change the O-ring. And this one will be for this one. And that's that. That's what that thing looks like. So, it's, yeah, I mean, an inch and a sixteenth will fit it. I don't know what the metric size of that is. But then we'll uh, pop our new filter on there. I don't put any hydraulic oil or anything like that because there's not that much that comes out of it. And then when you start it up, it'll fill this little bit up. So we'll put it all back together. Yeah, it just kind of goes until you hear a pop. And then you can... I guess you could put a little bit of, it's AW46 is what this one takes on the hydraulics. And we just, uh, all I could find was a break over too. I don't know where my big ratchet's at. And that's that. So now we just got the big uh, hydraulic one left, or hydraulic tank one left. These will be the six 17 millimeter bolts right here. Uh, this will bleed the pressure off the hydraulics, but there is none. I've also, because my last video, I do remember this, I had the arm all down where I could grease it and stuff. So that means there was no fluid in any of the cylinders. So my level was way up here. I took this loose and all of the fluid came rushing out of it, but I've got it up this time. You can tell with these cylinders out right here that there's fluid so far up in all of these. 
So I don't have any of it on the gauge, so it should not make a mess this time, but we'll pop this loose real quick. This will be kind of the same as the loader. There's the lid, I think a big O-ring, and then a spring. Should be like a little plastic piece that the spring sits on inside the filter. So as you take these up, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of hold it down because it'll still wanna kinda of bounce up. And at least it doesn't have oil puking out everywhere. So I got to <clears throat> put my latex gloves on. Fluid still looks nice and clean. A little bit of this oil on here just kind of helps it stick. And there's kind of a little uh, <clears throat> no tab or a piece that that actually sits in down there. You can feel uh, this guy, that guy in there. Our spring. And if you can put two across from each other and kind of. Snug it down, then you can let your hands off of it and get the rest of them in there. Just talking about that much. And that's that. So now we'll uh, put the oil in it, fire it up, make sure there's no leaks. And then, uh, Oh yeah, the final drives, and then we'll clean the inside of the cab out. <laughs> and then to fill the oil, I just got a long skinny funnel because it's uh, right here at the end. You kind of got to pour it a little slow, but that's what I have found that works the best is uh, just kind of a taller funnel where you can add it in there. This machine takes 7.8 quarts to fill it all the way up, uh, including with what's in the filter and stuff. So I think these are... Yeah, they're one gallon, so there's four quarts in each one of these. So it's almost, it's pretty much just two of these. There's a little bit left over in one of them if you let it run out. So we'll uh, put that in there. And yeah, you gotta put just a little in at a time because that funnel gets the small at the end, but that's about the only one I could fit. I took another one like this and cut it where I can get more in there at one time on the loader, but it doesn't work on this one, so. Okay, now we're going to bleed the air out of the fuel systems, and all you got to do is turn the key on for 60 seconds. And you can hear that noise like the little electric fuel pump filling it back up, and it's got an automatic air bleeder in here, I guess. So, I don't know what it says, so we'll just give that a minute, and then we'll uh, fire it up and make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere. kind of walk around and make sure I don't see any fuel, hydraulic oil. These seem to be good. I don't see anything dripping from the filter or the plug.
something up here, so. All seems to check out, so. Set it back off, I'll let the oil kind of drain down, I'll check the fluid or check the oil, and that's pretty much it. All right, we're right up there at the full line. Another thing you got to do on the 500 hour service is take the floor mat out and you take this cover off and you're just wanting to inspect the grease and the slew gear. Yeah, which is you have to remove, oh, you can really tell in the video, there's a little cap right there. So I took a vacuum cleaner and got what dirt I could out of there, maybe not enough, but now I'll just kind of reach my hand down there and pop that cap out of here. Plenty of grease down in there. Only it's got to be plum full. I'll double check, but as long as it says it does not white or appears to have mud and water, which it's got some dirt down in there from <laughs> knocking that off. But uh, looks like it's got plenty of grease and the teeth and stuff look good. So we'll just kind of cover that back up. All right, then my batteries keep dying, but I think I got these broke loose. Now we'll do the drive motors. And all I do is take a gallon jug and cut the side of it out where it fits right in here. It's a whole lot easier than trying to get it in that big drain pan or something. And this is uh, 80, 90 gear oil is what this takes. And it's kind of like on the loader, uh, the center one, which is a different size, when I get ready to fill it, We'll put it in, I'll plug the buy one in, I'll take that one out, and I guess I'll feed it in the top until it runs out the center. And then that's when you know this is full, but I don't see any uh, metal shavings or anything of concern. There's some bubbles in there that kind of shows up, but yeah, there's nothing, I don't see any, like I said, shiny or any kind of metal or anything like that. But these do, every 500 hours on these, you just change this, like I said, 80, 90 gear oil. Uh, yeah, which I need to look. It may be one of these, maybe all that it holds. It's not near as much as the loader. The loader takes like one and a half of those. So we'll let that drain out a little bit. The same thing to the other side. All right, now we fill it up until it comes out the center hole. Or it starts running out there. Come on. Old gear oil. Okay, there it's actually coming out the center. So now I'll put that one back in, maybe. You really want to get this stuff all over your hands when you do it, because it smells great. All right, now we just repeat the process on the other side. And that completes the 500 hour service on a Takahuchi TB260. So hopefully those of you that have these machines or are looking into getting them, that was somewhat uh, helpful. And like I said, I, I don't know, I'm sure I've gone on in the past, went over everything. So now tomorrow I'm gonna need to change the oil on my truck too. And then uh, just I'm going to work on cleaning the cab out and get it all greased and then it'll be ready to go for another uh, I'll change the oil again in another 250 hours and then we'll be back ready for the thousand hour service so which is pretty much uh, on this machine is similar to what I just did here so all right well you guys have a good night